When I first saw the BBC series Walking with Dinosaurs and the Ballad of Big Al, Diplodocus easily became one of my favorite dinosaurs of the Jurassic period. So to commemorate the hard work that the BBC put into Walking with Dinosaurs and the Ballad of Big Al, I wanted to talk about one of the largest animals to ever walk on this planet. First, I'd like to say while Diplodocus and Brachiosaurus are two very closely related vertebrates that offshoot off of Sauropoda, they are in different families. Brachiosaurus belongs in its own strange group, Brachiosauridae, and Diplodocus belongs in its own equally strange and weird and kind of unique group, Diplodocus. Diplodocidae. Diplodocidae. The way to tell the difference between the two is that Diplodocidae usually has a longer tail and they had a, a lower neck probably used to, to feed on lower brushes and probably mid brushes. The family Diplodocidae includes the dinosaurs, Supersaurus, Apatosaurus, and Diplodocus itself. Brachiosaurus, however, had a shorter tail and longer arms, four limbs. In fact, the name Brachiosaurus or Brachiosauridae literally means arm lizard. So now that you have a basic idea of what a diplodocoid is and the differences between diplodocoids and brachiosauroids. Now let's talk a little bit about diplodocus itself. That's what we're all here for after all, is it not? Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Diplodocus was truly massive. It was about 90 feet long and its tail made up about half of that length. To put that into perspective, that'd be like from around here. From here. This is not so there are two different species of Diplodocus because Diplodocus is actually a genus and not a species. So there are two main species, Longus and Carnegie. Longus was the first Diplodocus to be found, found in the 1800s by a guy named Osniel Marsh in 1877. However, Longus was actually incomplete and a more complete skeleton of Carnegie was found in the 1990s. And as you can see from this chart here, you can see that Carnegie is actually far more complete than Longus. And I might have neglected to tell you that I was a little bit too lazy to make another one of those cool little burst pop-ups for the name, and so I just scribbled out Longus and just put Carnegie. Diplodocus was an herbivore, and its meal consisted mostly of ferns, which is perfect because its teeth are pencil-like, and it helps them strip those leaves off the ferns, making Diplodocus perfectly adapted to eat the food that it ate. But there's a problem, the Diplodocus didn't have any molars, and many other sauropods didn't either. So it was just literally just stripping the leaves off the ferns and just swallowing them. But the problem with that is that ferns aren't exactly easy to digest in your gut. There was a problem there. If it couldn't digest the ferns, it couldn't get the valuable nutrients that it needed to live. Therefore, if it couldn't get the valuable nutrients that it needed to live, it dies. But a lot of other animals have a solution to this problem. Birds, for example, eat something called gastrolytes to help them digest the food that they eat. And a lot of dinosaur coprolites have been found with gastrolytes in them. What does that mean? That means paleontologists have found rocks in dino poo. Yeah, and it makes sense since once you swallow them, they go into your stomach and they grind your food into little pieces so that it's easier to go into your gut. This video here that was shot at the museum shows exactly how it works. A study published by Science in 2005 suggests that some sauropods ate grass-like structures, but you know, the X button's right there. This is gonna be the second time I'm recording this part of the video because the first time actually my face was overexposed and it didn't look good. My hair looked gray. I'm showing you the video now. It didn't look good. So I'm gonna say what I said in that video right here. One last thing I think is important to note is that a lot of kids books about dinosaurs, they often say in those books that some sauropods weighed as much as 20 elephants. While it's true that some sauropods were extremely heavy, they actually have to put in a lot of speculation when they say some weighed as much as 20 elephants. Dr. Steve Rusati covers this in his book, The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, and he actually has some accurate measurements of the weight of certain sauropods. So instead of giving your kid a dinosaur encyclopedia. Instead, maybe you should go check out Steve Rusati's book, The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs. 
If you've made it to this part of the video, I congratulate you because you are going to get just a hint more knowledge than the people who stopped the video right when there was a black screen. I initially said that there were two species of Diplodocus. So there are two different species of Diplodocus, but there are actually three species. And you saw that actually earlier from this chart here. You can see that Carnegie is actually... The third one is called Halloran. The reason why I didn't mention it in detail during the main part of the video is because Diplodocus Halloran was thought initially to be a seismosaurus. And so they were kind of confused and they're like, wait a minute, this is a Diplodocus, not a seismosaurus. So the moral of the story and what I tried to do with that little error in the video is to train you to do your own research. Don't take someone's word at face value and take it as gospel as if it's absolute fact and that they can never be wrong. And when you hear somebody say something and you hear somebody give a piece of information to you, question that information, ask for their sources, especially if they're trying to deliver to you scientific content like me. So yeah, the Plotticus Halorum, not Seismosaurus Halorum. How could they get that wrong? I mean, isn't it obvious? Aren't they supposed to be experts? What? We're still rolling? Ah. <laughs> uh.